Today I want to talk about how much money could be saved by making a one-time $1,000 extra mortgage payment. Hey everybody, welcome back to Drawbridge Finance. My name is Levi Woods and as always, I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not offering financial advice and I don't work in the financial industry. This is my channel, it's an opinion channel about money and uh, I've got it because I wanna make people make more money. Today I wanna to talk about mortgage payments because as you know or may not know if you've been following the channel for a while, last September, Karine and I bought a new house in Vancouver in one of the most expensive cities in the world. We bought uh, a home which is fantastic for us and we are loving living here. I've got my office kind of finally mostly set up and uh, it's been great. I've been able to edit nicely on my new office and it's been great to have a little bit of extra space and actually have a yard. So that's been fantastic. But one of the things that comes along with a new house is a new mortgage. And as you guys probably know, I'm not a huge fan of like paying down my mortgage very aggressively because I'm an investor. I know that I can make a better return on investment than I can paying down a low mortgage rate. Now, mortgage rates are still historically low. Um, this new rate that we have is 3.64%. We're locked in for five years, and, and I know that any payment that I make to that mortgage, I'm going to save 3.64%. So if I make an extra payment, I save the money on interest, and if I choose to take my money that I have that's extra and put it instead into an investment, I might be able to make a better return, or I might not, depending on the year. So it's, it's a question that I always struggle with and, and we know that at the beginning of a mortgage there's a lot of interest to be saved because you actually save the money on the compounded amount. So today I want to look at a chart. I want to just uh, break down two different characters and say, okay, well, what if, what if the characters had $1,000 and they put that $1,000 extra towards their mortgage payment? How much interest would it actually save them? And, uh, and I think the, the answer is going to surprise you because it's not, it's not set in stone. And so let's take a look at the chart. I'm doing this on a really low mortgage value and I'm doing it at a little bit higher rate than I actually have. The interest rate that I'm going to use today is 4.5% and the mortgage loan is going to be $200,000. And we're looking at a 30 year fixed term in this particular scenario. Of course, the variable rate mortgages change uh, or in Canada, the fixed rate terms change or we have to renew every couple of years. So it, every mortgage is different in different countries. So you have to take that into consideration. I'm just trying to do a video to uh, demonstrate you know, some of the different ways that a mortgage payment works. So the, the very first thing we look at is what the regular monthly payment is going to be. And in this case, it's going to be $1,013. You can see month zero, the balance of the loan is $200,000. And in the first month, we're going to make a payment of $1,000. The interest is going to be $750 and $263 is going to go to principal. That principal amount, 263, gets subtracted from the $200,000 balance. And you can see the outstanding balance after the first payment is $199,000. I've highlighted all the cells in red where the principal payment is less than the interest payment in any given month. As we scroll down this chart, you're going to see at month 60, we're still making this $1,000 monthly payment, but 684 is going to interest and a little bit more is going to principal, $328. Eventually, the way a mortgage works is that we will get down at, at 176 months, the, the amount of your payment going to the principal is greater than the amount of interest. The balance, therefore, is going down at a faster rate. So one of the things I often look at in this type of scenario in, in mortgages especially is we see this very, very steep curve of the, of the interest being very, very uh, high at the beginning and then tapering off as it goes down. If we scroll all the way to the bottom of this chart, all of the math working out, at month 360, we make our final payment through only $3 goes to interest and over $1,000 goes to the principal, leaving us a balance of zero. Now, everybody always wants to know how much interest did we pay and how much the total payments were, and this is very important. The payment total is $364,000. The interest payment is $164,000. And the total principal paid down is the $200,000. That's what the bank got. So they, they received the $200,000 back that they loaned you. They also received $164,000 in interest. What we're going to look at today is what happens if you make a $1,000 payment and 
how much does it save you? Now, the first character I want to look at today is Alice. She knows that this chart has a very dramatic curve, and if she makes an, er an extra payment early in her mortgage, this is going to save her a huge amount of interest. So she works really hard in that first year, and she scrimps and saves, and she gets together $1,000. And in month nine, she makes an extra payment of $1,000. So she makes her regular payment of $1,013. She makes an additional payment of $1,000 in that month. And you can see that this changes dramatically. The, the interest that she pays is still the same. It's right in that same $740 mark. But all of a sudden, the principal is paid down by an extra $1,000. This extra payment goes directly towards the balance outstanding. This one payment dramatically reduces the amount of interest that she pays. If we compare the regular Amort chart, the very next month, the normal payment would be $740 going to interest. And in her case, only $737 goes to interest. This seems like a very small amount, $3. But imagine this is $3 a month and that continues to grow each and every month from here till the very end of the mortgage. So let's just skip to the chase. Let's cut down to this and see that one payment, how much time and money did it actually save her? Well, it means that her very last payment is not going to be in month 360. It's going to actually be in month 357. So she shaved a full three months off of it in payments. And she's actually reduced her final payment from 1000 to 352 to bring her balance to zero. What this means is that the total amount paid that she paid out of pocket was her regular payments, $361,112, plus an additional payment of $1,000, leaving her total out of pocket $362,112, compared to the regular schedule, which would have had her at $364,813. This means that that $1,000 extra payment saved her $2,700 in interest. That is amazing. And that is the amazing part about the math of having a payment happen and generating income for a very, very long time. In this case, it's generating savings or interest savings. Granted, that is over you know, 29 years. She made that payment in the very first year. So let's do a quick comparison with Bob, who wasn't quite as, as swift as Alice. He's gonna make that payment, that same $1,000, but he's gonna make it in month 340 instead of month nine like she did. He's been paying the regular payment all along. This thousand dollars is also going to increase the amount of principal that he's paying, paying down the balance outstanding by a full thousand dollars in the month that he makes that payment. The difference is that it's not gonna compound save the way that Alice's payment did that she made really early in the term of the mortgage. In the end, Bob makes a total amount of payments $364,735 in, in payments. He still paid $164,000 in interest compared to the $164,813 over here. He actually only saved $77 in interest because he didn't have very much time for it to compound. So although it did save him money, paying an extra payment in the end of the mortgage did not help him very much. Now, this is, this is really great for people that have mortgages. Often when you start a mortgage, you don't have extra money to be putting towards it. You, most people overextend themselves and get the biggest house they can. And, uh, and that's always unfortunate. I mean, it's nice to be able to live within your means and have money to put towards your mortgage or towards your investments. Now, before I finish this video, I would love to just do another little comparison and say, well, what would happen if Alice had taken that $1,000 and put it instead towards an investment that paid a 7% return rather than putting it towards the house, which she was only gonna save 4.5% on. So let's just scroll right back up to the top. So I'm gonna do a second column for Alice. Now remember that this is not, this is not both in this case. I'm just doing a scenario of which one or the other. So we're gonna compare Alice on the left side making a thousand dollar payment in, in month nine, or Alice in the right hand column making an extra thousand dollars towards a dividend paying equity. So she puts the thousand dollars in, but she continues to use this mortgage rate or this mortgage payment uh, amortization schedule on the left hand side. So her thousand dollars generates in the very first month, $5.83 in dividends. That money gets reinvested back into the um, investment using a drip program, which costs her nothing. And so the, the, it's a one-time investment, $1,000, pays for $583 the first month, $587 the second month. So this balance starts to grow. At the end of this, if, we, if she held that for the 29 years and three months that she had, 
The total at the bottom, her $1,000 investment at a 7% return compounded would actually be worth $6,747. Now this is pretty amazing. And again, another example of the power of compound interest. This is a interest that's been gaining, or in this case, dividends that have been gaining over a 29 year period. $1,000 is almost sevenfold. So what I wanted to do was say, well, what, what happened if she wanted to use that money to pay off that mortgage? She'd been making regular mortgage payments over here and takes that uh, $7,438 right here. And the reason it's green in this column is because that all of a sudden is where this amount is worth more than the amount over here that is outstanding on her mortgage. See, in the previous month, she still owed $7,900 on her mortgage and her investments were worth $7,300. But at this point, $7,400 worth of investments, only $6,900 owing on her mortgage. So she could theoretically take the money from her investment and pay off the mortgage completely. So what I wanna do is now compare what would Bob do if he did the same thing. So we'll do his thousand dollars. So in the first scenario we ran, we put it in in month 340. And in this case, we're gonna put it into an investment, similar investment to Alice. It's gonna be a thousand dollars in stocks to pay a 7% dividend. And the dividend gets paid monthly. So we're gonna have $5.83 in the first month, same as Alice got in her first month, $5.83. And it's gonna to start to compound. At the end of his investment, because it's only been a year and a bit, it's worth $129 in extra in dividends that he's made. The total investment is worth $1,129, theoretically, of course, because we know that the, the principal could dip, uh, but generally speaking, most dividend plays don't have a lot of recession in their in their stock value. The stock values are fairly stable most of the time. So we're gonna look at when would he be able to pay off his mortgage relative to his other self where he was making these, this $1,000 towards his mortgage. And of course, we can easily see that, again, the investment would have won over paying down the mortgage. Now, the only way that this works is because the, the investment is returning higher than the interest being charged on the mortgage. So when these characters are making that choice, they always have to say, okay, well, the, the, if the mortgage rate is lower and the amount that I'm gonna make on the investment is higher, then whichever one is higher, that would be the one that would be the smarter or return the most money. If the mortgage rate was really high, like 10% and we only expected a 4% return on the investment, then obviously paying down the mortgage would be the smarter choice. But here we are in 2019 and mortgage rates are relatively low. They're at historic lows, in fact, and it, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, back in the 80s, when mortgage rates were ridiculously high, that would have been a totally different story. Uh, you know, So we have to look at what is happening right now whether or not these are good choices. But I'm gonna give you guys the full comparison here. So let's just do a snapshot for comparison. We're gonna look at month 353. Now that the reason I'm choosing this month is because that is the month that Alice would have been able to theoretically be mortgage free. If she, if she had put the money into the investment rather than to the mortgage, then her investment value would increase and she would have more money to be able to pay down this mortgage that she had taken over here. Let's just look at their net worth at that time. So in the total amount of money put in by all in all four scenarios, whether Alice chose to put the money into her mortgage, whether she chose to put it into her investment, whether Bob put it into his mortgage or Bob put it into his investment, they all put in the same amount of money, $358,719. Now the total interest paid by Alice in this column is a lot less than the interest paid by Bob, and subsequently more than if she had paid the interest on the regular payment schedule. You can see where I'm getting this math. You can see the interest is from this column here. Bob has paid the same interest in this case, but her investment has returned way more. In, this, in these two scenarios, they have zero investment. And so the total after all of this, like the net value, which is really ultimately important, what is the net value of the combined loan still outstanding and the value of the portfolio at that time? Alice is the clear winner. And again, I, the caveat here is that the investment has to be returning more than the mortgage rate. It doesn't have to be returning much more, just a little bit more, but still a little bit more will still be better than any extra mortgage payment. So now, of course, that is not for everybody. And even myself included, like I know the power of this compounding and I know that I have a, a I have a big mortgage right now because I live in an expensive city. So in my first year, I've been making extra mortgage payments. Now, 
I know the math doesn't work on this, but it makes me feel good to pay down that, those mortgage payments. I know that I can make these extra payments now, and then I can reduce those payments in a couple of months and after this first year, and I can kind of uh, weigh out those options of, of how much mix of my extra money is going towards my investments and how much is going towards my my home mortgage payment. So anyways, that's it for today's video. I hope that was insightful for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you'd click the like button down below, I would really appreciate it. Remember to subscribe, turn on the notifications bell, and let's get rich together.